Ride for the Moon! If you have not seen the Japanese intro to the 92 animated X-Men series, there's two different intros. One which is um, Rising, I think it was, and the other was like Cry for the Moon or something like that. I, I think, I if I'm remembering it correctly, I love those openings. It's brand new animation, all Japanese animation, just so detailed and wonderfully done. The only thing that tops it is like the Transformers animated series Japanese opening for with Jam Project singing, like, oh my god, it's so good. But, <laughs> enough fanboying over something else. Let's talk about this series. Like, oh my god. This came out at a time where I was too young to actually watch it, but when I did watch it, like, later down the line, around the time, around when Spider-Man, the animated series that came out on Fox, I think it was, came out, I loved it. I, I loved it. It was fun. It was thoughtful. It was deep. It, it could be very serious at times. This series tackled a lot of social issues, but it's X-Men. It's literally an allegory for racism, but not just that. There were a lot of very serious social issues and stuff like that, especially when it came to thoughts of the Holocaust and religion. Dude, the stuff with Nightcrawler and religion, my god. I honestly, weirdly enough, my favorite characters in this series were usually Beast and Gambit, because Beast was just fascinating because this big, Early dude, just he looks so strong, but he spoke with the softest cadence to his voice, and he enunciated every syllable, like something about Beast. Also, my favorite color is blue. Like between Nightcrawler and Beast, like come on. But I I did love Wolverine, Jean Grey. This was probably one of the few series where Jean Grey wasn't just used simply to be the Phoenix. Like let's be real you know because that always ends up being the thing she's either the phoenix or she's off to the side not really being involved and honestly i i loved Jean gray in this series cyclops was fun he was the red ranger he was the boy scout and the funny thing about it was always that for me especially reading the comics i've always felt like cyclops and wolverine hated each other because they wished they could be each other. Cyclops wished that he could just be the renegade bad boy who just did what he wanted when he wanted and it would all just work out for the best and no one could question him or anything like that. And Wolverine, considering the timeline when he was born, he would have grown up to be someone like Scott if he had been able to be raised normally, but his entire life got completely derailed because of his biological father and his past and blah 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 Rose. If you know the comics, you know what I'm talking about, but like honestly, these two characters could have easily had their entire lives flipped around in a lot of ways, and it never ended up being the case, but this series was fun, it was thoughtful, it was thought-provoking, you know, I, uh, so many people hate on Jubilee, Jubilation Lee, and my thing was always that, dude, the whole idea, at least I thought, was that Jubilee's powers were just boom, fireworks, and they weren't that strong because she was still young. And over time, she would gain more control over her powers, and they would become even more powerful and destructive as she got older. But, uh, everyone put her in this box, and I'm just like, but her powers are still kind of cool, let's be real. And people love Rogue from this series. Rogue being just strong and flying around, it's just like, that's not even her powers. Everybody's just like, oh man, why doesn't Rogue have the flight abilities later on? This was the best incarnation of Rogue. The incarnation of Rogue that you're familiar with is a lie. That is not the true Rogue. Rogue without the powers and just being like, I can't touch anybody. The, the Rogue you get later down the line, especially with X, 
Fox uh, uh, X-Men Evolution. That is the true rogue. Of course she's sad and mopey and all that good stuff. You know, everybody's just like, oh no, she's energized, she's fun-loving, she's happy-go-lucky despite all of her problems and all that. It's just like, nah, baby, nah. A lot of that comes from Carol Danvers. Let's be real. Like, they never really touch upon the fact that that Rogue was actually an enemy to the X-Men when she started out. Honestly, a lot of characters were um, enemies to the X-Men when they started out. It's, it's really funny, honestly. Let's be real. But, you know, this was based off of a Jim Lee book with a lot of the art being inspired by Jim Lee. And I remember loving this series, but when I went back to watch it later down the line, I'm just like, man, a lot of these episodes have some very inconsistent animation. And apparently this whole entire series was plagued by these issues time and time again. It, they cut a lot of costs, but you still got a solid series. Mostly because it took itself seriously between this, X-Men the Animated Series, and Batman the Animated Series. The two things that just, boom, those were the ones that just kind of were the ones to live up to. It really didn't help that they came out around the same year, 92, but people loved this series. People touted as a staple of great animation within America. And it really was, if not because of the animation itself, but just because of the themes. Like I said before, it ended up being just this thing that grew on a lot of people, and for a lot of people, it is their X-Men. They accept no substitutions, anything they see else down the line that, you know, came before or came afterwards just is a pale representation of the X-Men that they grew up at, with. And I can't blame them in a lot of ways. You know, while I did grow up with this X-Men, it didn't end up being like, oh, it's this or nothing else. Anything else is just terrible. No, a lot of good things came afterwards. It's just like, this is the first X-Men series to really be taken seriously. And that happened a lot in the 90s. You finally got those incarnations of certain characters that you could really take seriously. Spider-Man, Batman, Super. Superman, X-Men, uh, a lot of characters really started to shine during this era. And for Marvel, it started with this, X-Men. You know, spinning off of Pride of the X-Men, uh, which I'm kind of glad we didn't go with that pilot, Pride of the X-Men, because, man, Wolverine with an Australian accent? No, thank you. No, thank you. That He's Canadian. They didn't even realize he was Canadian. Come on! Australian accent? Ugh. Ugh, but please. His backstory at one point was going to be that he was literally a mutated Wolverine. So, there's a lot of bullets Wolverine dodged over the course of his publication history. But... You know, the ever cool Gambit. Storm. Storm was always a kind of okay character to me. A lot of people love Storm to death. I I'm okay with Storm. It's just that she's never really been one of my all time favorite characters. She's cool. She's awesome. She's fun. But she's never really quite been my favorite. You know, but. Oddly enough, I actually did really kind of like Cyclops, but it's mostly that over time he grew on me, over different incarnations, but, you know, this really was where a lot of my love for X-Men and comic books started, like, I have a few issues of X-Men from this time, and man, it, by the time the comic books rolled around to, you know, being more popular around this era, we were already past the point that we sh that's shown in this series, and some weird stuff was going on, like, I think Wolverine had had the adamantium ripped from his skin, and so on and so forth, some weird stuff was going on in the books, but, you know, 
never forget what got you started in terms of comics and you know whereas DC I got started because of Batman the animated series with Marvel it's thanks to this series that I ended up really enjoying a lot of X-Men books it's a great launching off point and some of the deeper marks of the X-Men history really come into play here it's unfortunate that the original original cast of X-Men like your Cyclops, Beast uh, Iceman, Iceman really didn't get any love in terms of this series, but, and even Angel was a vague entity, and we even had the whole situation with Havoc and his, you know, Cyclops' brother, which was barely touched upon. There, there was a lot of missed opportunities, but a lot of plot lines were still young, so you only got so far, but for what it had, this was a phenomenal series. Five years running, five seasons, like, this series... What's to say? Everything positive you could say about this series has already been said, and it's been said well, but, you know, for my two cents, X-Men has always, and will always, be a great series that, you know, despite its problems, still managed to always deliver a fantastic message. But tell me your memories of X-Men in the comment section below. Is it where you started in terms of Marvel? Or was it something else like Spider-Man, the animated series? You know, was it a phenomenal series to you? Or do you feel like it's far too flawed, especially by today's standards? I'm so excited to hear from you and you know please if you like this video like comment and subscribe and until next time i've been deuces then and i will see you later Bye bye